Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing the movie Duel from 1971, which I believe is... Um, okay, I'm just going to plug my phone in because that went from like 60% to 31 for some reason. Sometimes this phone is super strange. It was at like 66% a second ago. So we are going to just plug it in because now it went down to 29. I don't know what's going on with it lately. It's been dying super quick for some reason. I think it's time for... It may be time for a new phone. I do believe here. Let me just exit YouTube because it was on that. Go into this. Um, so yeah, today we are going to be reviewing Duel. I already said that, didn't I? Uh, which I believe was Steven Spielberg's, one of his very first films, anyhow. Um, and I'm just going to pull <coughs> the cast list here in a second. Uh, so Dennis Weaver was the main character um, in this film. And right from the very beginning, it kind of sets the tone for the film, if you've ever seen it. Um, where he's just kind of driving down the highway or freeway in the States. And as he goes further down his path, it becomes more and more secluded. Um, so that kind of sets the tone for the very beginning of the film. And then he ends up getting stuck behind this truck, like this tractor, like this uh, transport truck. Um, so he decides to pass it, and then the transport truck passes him again. And then he goes, hey, like, what are you doing? So he passes again, and it seems like he has gotten away, but then throughout the movie, this guy this guy just kind of follows him wherever he goes. Now, the cool thing about this was you never actually know who the truck driver is. You never actually see the truck driver's face. You just see his boots. And sometimes you kind of see like a little glimpse of him when, uh, when Dennis Weaver's character, David, is passing him. So you never actually really get like a good enough look at him to know um, who's driving the truck. So... Uh, this kind of shows how Steven Spielberg was a special director even way back then because it's like the truck is the actual villain and not the driver which is kind of which is a very hard thing to do even though you know someone is driving the truck uh, this is kind of like a cool a very cool horror type movie or thriller type movie where the truck is actually the real enemy and not the driver itself even though the entire time he is trying to figure out who the driver of the truck is. There's one scene in the restaurant where he confronts somebody and it ends up not being the right guy. And then all of a sudden the transport truck just starts moving again and he tries to chase down who it is, but we never actually find out. Now you can pull up the cast list and actually see who played the truck driver, but I mean, <laughs> the photo of him is not what he would have looked like for sure in the actual movie so it's still somewhat deceiving and I don't think there's any like older photos of him from anything else really I could be wrong there's seven photos so I guess we'll just kind of see what he could have possibly I don't know if you can kind of zoom in even when you zoom in on the photo from the movie it's still blurry so it's really hard to tell kind of what he would have looked like oh maybe because when did this movie come out? Oh, no, it doesn't even tell you what movie that is. <laughs> so, wow, they kept it really well uh, hidden as to what he could have possibly looked like back back then, for sure. Um, and he ended up actually dying in 1997 at the age of 83. So, 1971, he was born in 1914. Well, that's crazy <clears throat> to think about. Um, anyway... Uh, Jacqueline Scott played Mrs. Mann, who was David Mann's wife. Um, Eddie Firestone played the cafe owner. Uh, Lou Frizzle played the bus driver. Uh, I believe it must have been Gene Dinarski who played the man in the cafe that he confronted. And then Lucy Benson played the lady at the Snake-O-Rama. And Tim Herbert was the gas station attendant. Okay, so that's the one that he 
All right, asks for the change for the phone from... So yeah, this movie was definitely suspenseful. Every time he thinks he gets away, the truck ends up showing up wherever he is. Or he thinks he's, like, kind of uh, juked him or whatever by um, letting him go first. And somehow, once the driver of the transport realizes that he's no longer chasing anybody, he turns back around to try to find him every time. Um, so there really is no getting away from him. So at the end of the movie, he has this... Uh, big long chase with him and eventually he gets him to an even more secluded area like almost like a farm I think maybe he had finally now I don't know whether he had ever gotten to the point um, like where he was supposed to be going because I believe this was probably like a wild goose chase and sent him on all these different streets and he never really got to where he was supposed to be going so the original plan was just to go and meet up with some guy for a business meeting and then he gets, obviously, this kind of roadblock along the way. And, <laughs> yeah, it just ends up being a battle with him and this transport. Um, and then at the very end of the movie, uh, we have him put, like, a like the briefcase on the gas pedal. And the truck just, like, s s like slides the car off the cliff. And it's like the truck has died. At the end of the movie, you can see like the oil dripping and the sparks from the electricity and the wheel like turn spinning, spinning, spinning till the very end when it just kind of stops. And it's like he's defeated. He's defeated the enemy. Now, it's kind of funny that they didn't uh, make it so that at the very end of the movie, maybe the driver ends up actually attacking him because we never actually see the driver die. We just kind of see the door sw swung open and the truck go over the cliff. So did the driver of the did the driver of the transport live? Did he not? We don't really know. We just kind of see him. Uh, we just kind of see. Uh, oh my God, David just sitting there throwing rocks over the cliff edge at the end of the movie, and that's how the movie ends. So we're we're assuming the truck driver is dead because obviously if he wasn't. I think he probably would have ended up attacking David, right? Because he would have he would have been right there. So it wouldn't have made any sense for him to live, I guess, along with the truck. But it's kind of cool that uh, the door was swung open and it's like almost like, yeah, still making the truck the enemy kind of thing. Um, so yeah, really cool concept for a movie. Um, now, this was one of the movies I watched in film class way back in high school. And like, was it in my extra year? Um... So I graduated in 2011, and I took an extra year in 2012, although <laughs> I didn't really, because I was, by that, by that time, I kind of just passed the one class that I really needed for the credit, and just kind of, you know, skipped the rest of it, because it wasn't really important to me, but it is what it is, <laughs> like, even if I went back in time, I would do the same thing with, with that extra year, because it felt kind of pointless to me, and even feels more pointless to me now, uh, because I've learned so much more since being out of high school, like, <laughs> I don't know, school to me kind of seems like they don't really teach what they what they should, but anyhow, um, really enjoyed this film when I watched it in high school in film studies class, um, and I guess I've always kind of been a big movie buff, so yeah, watch, watching it again, oh my god, what is it, 12 years later, I guess, or at least 11? Seems, seems crazy. I couldn't remember, I couldn't for the life of me remember the name of this movie. It took me forever, quite a while to actually find it again. Uh, so, yeah, but I'm glad I did find it again and I bought it. It was, it was really cheap on the Xbox uh, store, so I just bought it again and watched it because I thought it was just a very unique way to do a thriller slash horror movie where you, you can never really see who is chasing him. It's just... You know somebody's there, Some somebody is crazed and chasing him, but you never really know who it is. And you'd really have to pay attention to the scene at the cafe, I think, in order to figure out which, uh, which truck driver actually gets up and leaves from the table, because he's trying to figure out, like, the boots, like, what the boots look like, and he ends up confronting the wrong guy in the end anyway, in the cafe, and ends up uh, almost getting beat up to, like, gets hit a couple of times for it, so, uh, very unfortunate for him, um, but at least he was able to, uh, live through the situation, and I feel like this is a, 
like a possibility that could happen to anybody, like somebody just having like a road rage type situation. Kind of that's kind of what it feels like, right? Is that although this was probably a little bit more to the extreme as opposed to, you know, your typical like, oh, I'm gonna fight you, and then people just kind of go on their separate way, or hey, you know, blah 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 to you, and then we kind of just separate. This was like, <laughs> this was like I'm going to get you for passing me, kind of thing. Now, <laughs> obviously, if that was what set you off. I feel like there was obviously something, you were obviously going out of your way to terrorize this person, right? Like, make them make them think that you weren't going to leave them alone until one of you was dead. And it just escalates throughout the movie more and more when he um, even comes back down the road and runs over the phone booth that uh, David is in and kills all the women's snakes and pets and so on and so forth. Like... This guy is relentless on getting David to have, like, this final battle with him. Um, so, yeah, very cool concept for the movie. I did give this movie a 9 out of 10. I feel like it is deserving of that, and this movie could potentially be remade by somebody. I would like to see a remake of it, actually, just to kind of see what somebody would do with it. Now, I guess we kind of maybe got that with the Joyride movies, which I think I might review soon. Um kind of like the same concept where the trucker is after the uh after people but it's a little bit different because i think we actually find out who the killer is in the joyride movies maybe we never actually see his face i'm gonna have to go back and watch them now um but yeah nine out of ten for this movie and i will see you guys in the next review bye bye for now